John Cusack, Elizabeth Banks. It's so exciting to be here after, particularly after watching you, my friend, over the last two years, sink deeper and deeper and deeper into the molecular, molecular structure of pet sounds and smile. Yeah. You just bathed yourself in this music for the better part of the last two years. I don't have, I don't have to ask how you prepared for this role. No, you were, I, I was, I was tr telling you to listen to him, right? You were. And aren't they extraordinary? They are extraordinary, yeah. and and it's like there is, uh, there is a story in each of those songs, and we kind of get a sense of a little bit of that story. But through this film, it's like you're you're telling the story that we haven't heard. Yeah, 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 mm -hmm. we are, and uh, I think people probably don't know about this period of his life where he went away and was savagely abused by this doctor and misdiagnosed mm -hmm. and mistreated and all those things. But um, it's still the, um, a version of um, a kind of a creative genius at work. Mm -hmm. You know, it's still you, you're still watching a guy keep that flame alive and in, inside of him, even mm -hmm. when he's being drugged and medicated and abused and all those things. It's like it couldn't be snuffed out. You know, that's it, this movie is. I mean, it's about surviving and resilience and love. You know, pulling you through. And I. I mean, I, I find it really inspiring. Their whole story is so inspiring. When you meet them today and they're so happy and they're still in love and they have a family and they've got dogs running around and he still makes his music and there's just a support now, you know, that he deserves, um, yeah, I, that he I, earned. I, I don't know if he ever really <laughs> had, you know? Um, yeah. But I, I always think back, you know, where, um, if you, you know, that music is so in our DNA, right? And all these sounds are so in our DNA. Then you think, well, what what was it like before the, these things happened? Or before people put orchestral music in rock and roll, you're like, oh, the, no one did. So I think, <laughs> and then you think, oh, he did. So yeah. then, but then you have to like visualize or hear this sound long before it arrives because you have to ask symphony orchestra people to come in yeah. and you have to say you and know you tweak your string and do yeah this you know and, and then three tubas okay the tuba in the center mic just go one inch left and he's competing with the Beatles with George Martin and Ringo Starr and these two little songwriters named Lennon and McCartney and they're going blow for blow rubber soul God only knows doing these things and he had one ear and he was doing all of it he was producing, composing, arranging, playing, singing. It's it's an extraordinary like um, explosion of creativity that came out of this guy. So, John, you were the one who actually told me this amazing fact, but Sgt. Pepper's and Pet Sounds, right? No, Smile, smile. Sessions. The smile Sessions are, are connected in this way that I think a lot of people showing up for this film don't know. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think what happened was is that um, they were, Brian put out um, a song and then the Beatles would react to it and they would do Rubber Soul, then he would do Rubber Soul and then he would say, oh my God, these guys have broken new waters. And they were both trying to get to this new sound. And Paul McCartney came over and was listening to the Smile Sessions and his mind was blown. <laughs> and and Brian... And, they're still but, friends, they're, by they're, the they're still friends, yeah, they're still by the way. It, it was, <laughs> it's all friendly and It, it was almost like respectful once a mind gets stretched, you can't stretch it back kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. So he, and he's making one of his songs on, on the album called Vegetables, and he has Paul McCartney chewing celery on it. <laughs> and and that, so the sounds of the crunching is Paul McCartney. <laughs> and the Beach Boys are all on tour doing their, yeah, their thing. Like, and what? Brian's just like in the studio <laughs> creating his thing, right? And then McCartney goes back and says, scrap everything, man, because <laughs> I, I just have my mind blown, right? And it's not even that they stole from each other or not. But no, you, they really inspired I mean, each other. But you can hear yeah. Sgt. Pepper's in Smile Sessions, and you can hear ELO it's in Smile amazing. Sessions. You so can hear true. Everything that happens in the next 50 years in pop music, you can hear in smile sessions. It was like a moment in art that had to sessions. explode, and it exploded yeah. in a few different places. Yeah. So the title of the film is Love and Mercy, and your character it really shows the true meaning of love and mercy mm -hmm. to, to Brian Wilson. Your character, who is a, a real woman. Yeah. She, oh, yeah. She's <laughs> oh, you a, got a fierce, chance to meet. amazing um, a woman I admire very much, and um, because, you know, I think she... She saw the man, sort of the, the pure, sweet man, 
that lived underneath all of this abuse and, and illness and you know misdiagnosis and manipulation manipulation and she was able to fight for him you know and 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 stuck with him when a lot of other people had turned their backs on him and she mm -hmm. just thought that's I, I'm not gonna do that I can't do that and I, I love that Byron they're they're like they're like sweethearts to this day yeah. I mean they're really they're yeah. really loving and sweet and they have saved each other I mean I, I don't it really is a two-way street you know she she was saved too her life became something something she didn't imagine when she met Brian Wilson. John, I know that this has been uh, an important and transformative experience for you, mm -hmm. taking on the role of Brian Wilson uh, and, and on, on a recovering Brian Wilson. Mm -hmm. What will you take out of this experience uh, for the rest of your life? Well, I, I think when you, when you step into the, the mindset of someone who is so unformatted and you know it's not like he won't be put in a box he doesn't even recognize the walls of the boxes you know and I think there's a part of us that we have to keep in uh, alive that way that's exploratory that's taking risks that's going to go by intuition the mood of your soul so it sort of affirms the you know the the world sort of beats that down and tries to snuff that flame out and says okay you're this get in your box go in here and I think um, doing this is kind of, you know, it's relit that fuse a little bit to just take more risks and do those types of things. Well, flame on. Flame on, right? All right, guys. Flame on. Thanks so much. <laughs> Great seeing you.